开始吧。Uh, ladies, gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, my name Gao Xingming, uh, from China, uh, in charge of uh, Vice Chairman of the uh, Internet Society of China. This workshop organized by China Association for Science and Technology, in brief, CAST. As you know, CAST is the largest national non-governmental organization for scientific and technological workers. CAST has 199 members, almost all the academy institutes and the universities are members of the CAST. Since 2004, the CAST uh, was granted by UN as consultative body for ICT. So CAST established a, a consultative committee for UN information and communication technology, in brief, CAST CCIT. I'm also very, very honored to be a member of this committee. Now, CAST C, uh, CCIT proposed a serial workshop during the IGF. This time, it's our fourth time to held a workshop discussing on the so-called open knowledge environment issues. Today, on afternoon session, we have honor to invite several distinguished professors and officials and experts on this field. Let me first of all introduce our distinguished speakers this afternoon. On my left hand is Professor Liu Chuang. She is a professor of the Institute of Geography and the National Resources under the Chinese Academy of Science. And my, on my left side is Mrs. Anna Nevis. She is the director of the Department Information Society in Ministry of the Science and the Education in Protocol. And also on my right hand is Professor Tao Xiaofeng. Yeah. He is a professor of Beijing University of Post and Telecommunication. He is a very uh, famous professor in China on the mobile network technology. Again, on my left side, we have a distinguished panelist. Dr. William Drax from Zurich University, Switzerland. Uh, William told me he has uh, a panel this morning already uh, three times. Three hours. Oh, three hours. <laughs> now is the fourth workshop. He joined us. Uh, very, very, very pleased to invite him as our speakers. And again, on my uh, right hand, we have uh, uh, Professor Zhou Qiang. Yeah, he is the director of the S&T Department Institute Remote Sensor Application 
of the China, uh, China Academy of Science. He is also expert of the remote science, remote sensors technology and ab application, e disaster, disaster relief. In this field, he is also very active, very famous in China. Again, on my left side, we have a very honor invited Professor Xu Hong. She is the director of the Institute of the Internet Policy and the Law, Beijing Normal University. She is expert of the copyright uh, regulations and the laws experts. So you can see our distinguished speakers today is very, very uh, specialized in this field. We call the uh, OKE environment issues. Now, uh, allow me to invite Mr. Professor Liu Chuan as our first spe speaker. Please, Professor Liu Chuan, you have the floor. Good, one, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So proud to be here again to uh, discuss about the open knowledge environment issues. My topic is uh, how to uh, create an inclusive methodology of open knowledge environment. Uh, take the Geo Museum as an example. Uh, before I present this, I would like to reveal 10 years experience of CoData ICSU in developing countries. Uh, CoData is the International Committee on Data for Science and Technology, the International Council of Sciences. This is uh, uh, 40, 46 years uh, this organization was established. So CoData uh, uh, represents ICSU participant visas uh, in Geneva 2003 and uh, Tunis 2005. And uh, also, CoData promised to try to dedicate its effort on bridging digital divide. So uh, CoData then uh, created a new task group focused on the developing countries. The task group name is on uh, preservation of and access to scientific data in developing countries. This task group, uh, including the uh, scientists, uh, more than 50 uh, uh, countries uh, participated in this effort. Uh, during the last 10 years, three phases we are, we are focused. One is the focus on policy and strategies of preservation and open access to scientific data in developing countries. Second is capacity building and the support the decision making. And then uh, we, uh, for the, the, the most recent years, we focus on the open knowledge environment. So the task group is, uh, 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 was created in 2002 in the, uh, is uh, uh, focused on the uh, policy and the strategies uh, on the scientific data. And then uh, what, we, what, what we want to, what the objectives of this task group is, uh, is awareness of preservation of access to scientific data in developed countries and uh, uh, help developing countries to uh, enhance the capacity building and the strategy making and the enhancing competition between developing countries and the industry countries. And uh, what, what kind of action we, uh, we uh, made during the last 10 years? One is we hold a, a country series international workshops uh, in China, South Africa, Brazil, Mongolia, uh, Cuba, uh, Thailand, uh, and, and so on. And then we, have, we host other uh, training workshops and then uh, we have uh, several cases to support decision making 
now we're working on the open knowledge environment. It, this is the, uh, with the, ta the uh, country series uh, international workshops. Uh, in the, during the last 10 years, uh, we have this uh, uh, very beginning is 2003, 2004 in China, and then in Shanghai, and then in South Africa, and Pretoria, and then in Brazil, Sao Paulo, and in uh, Cuba, Mongolia, and, and uh, uh, almost uh, uh, it's uh, two years, one year, we have the international workshops and help these countries to recognize what could be uh, is useful for these countries to make the decision making and the is right strategy, national strategy. And we, we work on this not only by ourselves, but also joint actions uh, with the core data, with the international panel of uh, academies and the UN Gate and also uh, Science Council of Asia, Asia, Net, Asia Pacific Networks, and the Ministry of Science and Technology of China, and uh, also uh, uh, National Research Foundation in South Africa, uh, National Research Foundation of the US, and so on. So we, we, we got the support from these, these uh, organizations focus on the, uh, the, the, what the big challenges from developing countries and what could be we, uh, the action for us can work together on this. We are very happy to see the, the fruit and the, the China government, South Africa, Brazil, and Mongolia also did uh, just uh, help them to make the scientific data policy and then uh, and, uh, gradually, gradually change the more and more scientific data open, open available. So this is very good for us. Not only this, we have a focus on the, uh, for the minimal developed goals. We focus on three uh, specific topics. One uh, is the uh, poverty reduction. Uh, second, uh, 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 second is the disaster mitigation. And third one is the public health. So we uh, encourage young scientists to join this and uh, several young scientists right now already play the leader role in this, uh, uh, in this uh, area. So, uh, and we, through the uh, training workshop, we have in the Ulaanbaatar, in the, for the North Korea, uh, a specific training for the North Korea, and for the developing country, 40, 40 countries, uh, and the scientists and the decision makers come to China and, and join this. So this is really very helpful, not only this, but we have a serious exhibitions for the, what the fruit, what the result from these actions. Besides this, we support decision makers. This is the, uh, uh, the especially for the disaster, uh, risk, uh, quick response to the disaster. So for this is the, in, the, in the China earthquake in the Sichuan. So we developed the scientific data to support uh, uh, the, the uh, rescue uh, and the quick response. Another example is from Haiti earthquake. So we work on the, uh, uh, the data mining, uh, the data mining methodology, very quick to, uh, to develop based on the remote sensing data. And then we uh, developed uh, uh, several uh, uh, useful data sets. One is the road system in the uh, uh, disaster area and the campus. Uh, and also collapse buildings and the landslides and all this resolution uh, is half uh, meters resolution, uh, less than half meters resolution, very high resolution. Then we send this to UN Spider, very quick to the UN Spider, and then uh, we saw all this, uh, this kind of uh, data just one week, uh, it's uh, less than one week. Uh, is uh, uh, five days later, we send all this kind of data to the UN Spider. And we got a, a good response for the U.S. Spider. This is Laurent, he is the head of the office in uh, in the U.S. Spider office, and uh, he said, "This is great." Uh, and uh, he, he said, "We just need this." And I call talk to him, and uh, he said, "This is really we need uh, this more this time." And then uh, and then we send uh, send uh, more information again, and then uh, uh, we keep contact very very, very frequently. Also, we send this kind of information to the UN DESA uh, uh, for, for the decision making uh, for the UN uh, system. 
So the, the head of the, uh, the, the UN DESA, the, uh, uh, the uh, public administration and the development, and uh, 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 Ms. Haiyan, and he, uh, she uh, sent a uh, message to us, and uh, she said, really, would the UN need this? Besides this, uh, uh, country series workshops, training uh, workshops, capacity building, and support the decision making, we now we focus on the open knowledge environment. And we have several uh, cases uh, for the uh, biodiversity uh, in China and, in the, uh, uh, and also in the disaster uh, uh, related. Now it's so for the uh, environment, earth science environment and the more broad society. This is the uh, uh, Geo Museum. This your museum is, uh, and, and uh, we, we, this is a joint effort from the International Ge Geographical Union, CODATA Committee, uh, International Committee on Data for Science Technology, and the Geographer Society of China. And then uh, the, uh, this is your museum formally launched last year in China, and then the uh, very high levels uh, uh, experts participate in this uh, uh, lunch meeting. And uh, we, we create uh, an uh, inclusive mechanism for the open knowledge environment. In here, I think there's uh, five uh, key steps. One is how to collect the information and the archives. So not only information, but uh, real things uh, in the archives. And uh, we, keep, keep, we, uh, we announce this, keep all of this as a full, open, and not for profit policy. All, all this public available for all, uh, everybody. So this could benefit earth science research, education, and the broader society. So when we collect all these uh, valuable archives, then another critical point is uh, curation. So how to make a knowledge input? Uh, so we have a, a, a world, world level, uh, a world class scientist, and to together with the, all the archives and uh, put the knowledge related in the earth science, environment, social science, and the art. So then we integrate the science and the art, not only science, but art, and make them beautiful and uh, uh, is, uh, uh, interactively uh, to people to understand, easily to understand the science. So we call this uh, the curation step two. Then we citation them, uh, including contributor hall, we establish contributor hall, we citation them, and then put them online for services. Each one we give a certificate. For, now, what, uh, what uh, halls are we already online uh, now? One is uh, open knowledge environment for knowing international cooperation programs. For example, we right now is, is uh, international per year. This uh, uh, is the programs. So this is the whole, the first IPY is 1882 to 1883. Second is uh, uh, 1932 to 1933. A third one is uh, IGY is uh, 1957, 1958. And the most regional one is uh, 2007 to 2008. So more than 2,000 uh, stamps uh, from the uh, more than uh, six countries. Uh, so in the, during the last 80 years, on this topic already, uh, also related with the knowledge, scientific knowledge, and art related knowledge input online. Another one, uh, another one is, uh, this is a poll, we focus on uh, uh, first effort on the uh, three poll agents, it's uh, Antarctic, Arctic, and uh, Tibet. And this is uh, from this, we try to understand uh, geographers and the scientists, for kids, for uh, even for, uh, for university students, they understand how they can dedicate themselves into the science. So this is, we take uh, several halls. One of them is Nelson Amson Hall. Uh, the last year is Nelson, uh, 150 years birthday, and uh, uh, Amson is the 100 years to reach the uh, South Pole. Uh, both of them are from Norway. So this is, so we have uh, that's, uh, more than 1,000 stamps and the related archives from uh, 40 countries 
is uh, uh, in the, the, the stem issued during last 100 years. So this is uh, really very attractive and then and, uh, record the whole history of this uh, record. Another one is for Qinghai Tibet Himalayas. And uh, maybe uh, a few of, uh, of us and, uh, can reach this uh, the so high uh, uh, plateau area and the mountain area. So we set up this knowledge environment for knowing these special regions, for uh, especially under, understanding the global change in this area. So we have more than 1,000 stamps uh, in, the, uh, in, in, in this uh, during last 100 years. And also remote sensing uh, satellites uh, related uh, to this knowledge and, uh, and the uh, stamps there. And we also uh, we set up, the next month we will set up the contributor hall. Right now we have more than 160 uh, contributors to uh, donation and uh, contribute to the uh, 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 inclusive uh, 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 the museum. So there are uh, more than 20, 24, I think, to, from 24 countries, these this, uh, this, uh, people to dedicate them to the whole. So I think this is uh, from this example, we can understand this is uh, how to include, how this mechanism is an uh, in inclusive mechanism. Everybody can be ca participant and everybody will have find yourself in the museum if you contribute. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Liu. The Professor Liu uh, is also the director of the, this digital geo uh, museum. Uh, he has uh, made a lot of efforts to use the mechanism open, open knowledge environment in, in the process of the establishing this digital museum. This case, I think, uh, is uh, valuable for for us and uh, very helpful to learn. Thank you again. Uh, now I would like to invite the uh, second speaker, is Professor Tao Xiaofeng. Uh, he will present the case study of open courses, or we call the open university practice in China. Now, Professor Tao, please. Thank you, Professor Gao. Thank you all. Today, my topic is cases on open courses from Chinese university. First, please look at the outline, uh, for, uh, background of op open courses. Open courses evolution in China, and open courses characteristics in China. Here, uh, especially uh, in MIT, uh, there are also uh, open courses. There are open courses presented in from, from the year 2000. You can see it, there are three stages. The first stage uh, in the year 2000. Second stage, the year 2005. The third stage, the year 2012. In the uh, year 2000, about 12 years ago, MIT uh, launched open courses where at that time, uh, the main mission for them is to advance knowledge and to educate students. Uh, by the end of 2000, uh, the year of 2000, um, at that time, just part of uh, PPT materials uh, could be used, could be presented uh, at that time. In the year 2005, uh, MIT set up open courses where consortium OCWC. Nowadays, OCWC is a worldwide com committee of hundreds of hundreds of higher education institutions. Uh, there is very large impact on global education. Uh, from the year 2005, after uh, uh, seven years uh, ex established now uh, till now, the year 2012, totally more than 200 universities involved, and more than 14,000 courses uh, are established. This is worldwide used. Uh, very importantly, uh, it's free of, free of charge for everybody, but forbidden for commercial applications. 
uh, from this slide, I'll show you of course is evolution in China. Nowadays, uh, there are so many uh, top universities in the world established open courses, but why China still uh, established open courses? I think at least three uh, reasons. The first one is language defense. Uh, nowadays, all, also many uh, Chinese people study English, but I don't think uh, they can, most of them can speak very well. So language is very important for, for open courses. The second one is cultural uh, defense. For example, if you want to learn something about Taoism, learn something about Kung Fu, it's very difficult to um, get this kind of open courses from the website. And the third one is uh, technical problems. Uh, nowadays, especially in the west part of China, uh, their uh, internet speed is still very slow, sometimes uh, less than one megabit per second. So if you download a video, one megabit per second is very low, so uh, we waste much of time. So this one also very important, just like I said, especially for the west part of China. Uh, in the year 2003, uh, Ministry of Education in China launched a project named High Quality Curric Curriculum Construction Project. Uh, HCC. At that time, many aim to improve the educational quality in Chinese universities, mainly focus on college major courses. The target user is uh, uh, college students. Uh, college students. By the end of the year 2010, more than uh, three, uh, 3,700 hundred national high quality courses were construct, cover 31 province, hundreds uh, of colleges, universities involved. Our university, BOPT, also involved in this project. It's, high, it's highly uh, improved the quality of col uh, college education. And uh, it is uh, a foundation of the following college video open courses project launched uh, in the year 2000. 2011. Uh, in the year 2011, uh, also Mo, uh, MOE, Ministry of Education China, launched College Video Open Courses, uh, CVOV project. Uh, his mission is to uh, spread knowledge to the society. And at this, this time, science, arts, philosophy, literature are involved in CVOV project. Uh, last year, uh, is there, uh, last year, 39 top universities in China apply 213 video open courses in all, but only 100, 100 are approved by MOE. Uh, MOE's uh, plan uh, by the end of uh, the year 2017, totally 900 more uh, college video open courses online. And uh, nowadays, some network por uh, portals also are also used for, for sharing. For example, this time, uh, this means uh, Chinese means uh, Chinese culture. Chinese culture uh, similar for Chinese culture, but uh, use English to introduce uh, Chinese culture. You can see here CNTV. Uh, Chinese Network Television, CNTV, here. Uh, the third stage of uh, Chinese uh, open courses is Open University, Open University of China. Uh, this year, uh, this June, uh, M also MOE, Ministry of Education, established uh, the Open University of China. Uh, based on previous uh, Chinese central radio and the TV university. And uh, this university, uh, totally more than 3 million students registered. And uh, the open university, the, I think the, maybe there's a special properties for uh, open university of China. Uh, this university can award a bachelor degree to the students. Uh, from this figure, you can see uh, we use satellite to separate the knowledges.
Uh, from this slide, I introduce open courses characteristics in China. There are three elements when we, when we consider open uh, courses. The first one is resource uh, construction. The second one, how to deliver. And the third one is the target group. Target group. For resource construction, uh, the problem, for example, funding shortage. Nowadays, of course, we have some uh, donation, but mainly uh, mainly sponsored by the government, especially by MOE, Ministry of Education. And for language defense, uh, some volunteer uh, on language translation, uh, so many volunteers in this area. And uh, most of the third problems, uh, most academic courses very hard to uh, understand. So t uh, the teachers, uh, professors, uh, can get more feedback from online students. The feedback uh, is uh, more, far more than users than used. Uh, take uh, the Chinese, uh, chi China Open University, for example. You can see here the way for deliver. Uh, first, uh, digital laboratory, like this library. Nowadays, there are uh, 234, how to see? There's so many e-books, <laughs> so many e-books, and uh, uh, 7,000 academic literature, and 2,600 social science digital periodical. And uh, there also uh, we have some flexible terminal, for example, digital TV, mobile terminal, especially nowadays, uh, most people can use 3G or 4G. 4G. I also heard in, in this uh, city, Baku also have 4G terminal, mobile terminal, and online services. And of course, we also uh, pretty much attain to cooperation with others. For example, with UK Open University. Uh, when we uh, cooperate with UK Open University, maybe we can use bilingual education. And for us, uh, for teachers, uh, for the teachers, teachers can also get improved. For example, we can get more feedback from online students. Just now I said the number of online students is uh, very big. And we can also, uh, from the feedback, we can get more inspiration for teachers. Uh, this figure shows the uh, online education platform for teachers. This, this one is online platform for teachers. And this figure shows us how to, uh, let's see, this is uh, high quality courses. Uh, and this, this high quality courses uh, present by our university, BOPT. And, and this course uh, shows us the uh, signal processing, digital signal processing, the principle of digital signal processing. And for students, uh, there are so many. Uh, resources, tremendous resources for, for them. And uh, also very important, uh, they can take real-time interaction. Interaction. For example, uh, after we uh, have uh, open courses, we can chat with, chat with teachers and uh, also their, their classmates. You can see here, this maybe is a chatting room. Here is a, a, a news for CCTV. Uh, CCTV Northern Monitor is a, a Chinese central television CCTV. The number of internet users in China has exceeded uh, uh, 500 million, according for near 40% of the con county's total po population. And the number of the internet users from the countryside has reached 130 million. This is a news from CCTV. I think in the future, the government will go on playing a very important role on in open courses project construction. And the national top colleges, universities may form a closed consortium to uh, develop systematic courses on high tech scientific majors, especially in this kind of majors. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Tao. Uh, I think the Open University, this name is no new. Uh, 
Uh, I think uh, several decades uh, uh, ago in UK, they already opened uh, uh, first uh, open university. But uh, in that time, it was used the uh, television technology. But now open university shift on internet and uh, create an uh, open knowledge environment standard. So I think this case study is very useful and helpful we have to learn. I think uh, we have a uh, uh, third speaker is uh, from uh, Portugal. Is our distinguished uh, panelist is uh, Miss Anna Navy. Then, please, Anna Navy. Okay, good afternoon. Well, I think, I know, it's difficult to be uh, awake after lunchtime, but uh, I think that we had very good uh, pr uh, presentations until now, and uh, I hope that my presentation will be so interesting uh, as the, uh, the others were. Um, I will speak about uh, something that was already tackled, is the importance of open knowledge for economic and social growth and the importance and how, how interesting it is to, to have it discussed here uh, in the Internet Governance Forum. Uh, so my focus will be on the, on the open access uh, and preservation of scientific, uh, scientific uh, results and uh, the, why they are important for the economic and social growth and it will be uh, the case of the Portuguese speaking countries that I will focus. So, the growing adoption of open access policies to scientific research results. Well, there are several problems associated with the, with the open access policies. I'm not going to talk about IPRs, copyrights, intellectual property rights, not talking about that. I'm going to talk about the open access policies, about the, the research that is supported by public funding. The origins are the, the last decades of the, the, the 20th century, where we can find the first digital repositories, the first open access journals. Why they appeared? Well, ideal publicly funded research should be public, pub uh, publicly available. And uh, the national uh, funding agencies they started to feel the growing costs of subscriptions to scientific publications. Um, the pioneer initiatives, uh, I have uh, to underline the foundational open access principle statements in Budapest Open Access Initiative in 2002 and the Bedeste Statement of Open Access Publishing 2003 and finally the Berlin Declaration of 2003 as well. The benefits of open access, well, they are being uh, analyzed, studied. There are several studies nowadays. We have the Finch report that just was released in, uh, in July. Uh, but um, I, I choose the UNESCO policy guidelines uh, where it states that the benefits of open access uh, they enable computation and third, they improve the speed, the efficiency and the efficacy of research. They are an enabling factor, uh, a factor sorry, in interdisciplinary research. They increase the visibility, the usage and impact of research and allows the professional, the practitioner, the business communities and uh, any person to benefit from research results. Uh, according to the Finch report that I just mentioned, that was released and uh, is now uh, used by the UK government, 
um, it says that finding ways to improve the flows of knowledge are seen as promoting enhanced uh, transparency, openness and accountability, and public engagement with research. Never forget that I'm talking about uh, results, uh, science results from funding, uh, um, from a funding, um, uh, from public funding, sorry. And the closer linkage between research and innovation with benefits for public policy and services and for economic growth and increased returns on the investments made in research, especially the investments from public funds. Researchers are more cited. Uh, the research can be used by other researchers and so the knowledge will, will have a, a very uh, fast continuation and there are so many uh, good things about this, uh, this openness um, that I'm going to have, I think, another slide or two, and then I'm going into the, the, uh, the Portuguese-speaking countries case. Uh, still according with the Finch report, significant efficiency savings and many wider social and economic benefits could be achieved if we were to move worldwide to an open access regime and the key policy questions are how to promote and organize such a move. Um, this year, the European Commission uh, adopted a communication uh, on uh, scientific information. It, it is called Boosting the Benefits for Public Investments in Research. Along with this communication, uh, the European Commission presented a, a Commission's recommendation for Member States. Uh, so it's not mandatory, but it, uh, uh, it states uh, some uh, recommendations to the Member States to follow. Uh, and why it was released now? Because we are preparing the Horizon 2020 that will be the next framework program uh, that will support research uh, from 2014 until 2020. So here in the European Commission communication, it says that fuller and wider access to scientific publication and data will help to accelerate innovation, foster collaboration and avoid duplication or effort, build on previous research results, therefore improves quality of results, and evolve citizens and society, improve transparency of the scientific process. Of course, each one of, of these statements, they can foster lots of, of discussion, uh, but as we are not having now a, a discussion, I'm just making a presentation, um, uh, j just uh, uh, let me to tell you that uh, all these points are now having a big discussion among in Europe, among uh, the Council of Ministers, uh, so the Member States, the European Commission and the European Parliament. But still, well, we have uh, facts, we have evidence. So, and we can see that uh, presently uh, around 20% of worldwide published scientific papers are available in open access. And you can see that from the beginning of uh, the year 2000, uh, 2000, 2002, 2003, you have a huge growth of the publishing uh, available in open access. Okay, so let's go uh, into the Portuguese-speaking countries. Cape Verde. Well, uh, I think that you know that it's uh, a small island, but still they have already uh, its own uh, university. Portugal is very, uh, very uh, uh, um, uh, close to the to the interaction and uh, and to to foster the university. And uh, uh, they have still reduced scientific production, but they have something very good because they, are, uh, they have their PhDs uh, out of their country, but then they come back and they have very high positions in their, in their ministries and therefore they are 
uh, able to do a very good work. So I think that with this university and in 10 years, the scientific, uh, um, the, the scientific production in Cape Verde will evolve a lot. Uh, so these are the these are the two repositories in uh, in Cape Verde. So they have already open access as well. Why? Because they are being influenced by the, by the policies uh, that are being developed in Portugal. Open access in Mozambique. So it's a country with 20 million inhabitants uh, that has some reference scientific production already, uh, and they are currently served by just one open access repository. So we have their numbers. I'm not going to, to say those numbers, only for you to be aware that Mozambique is uh, producing scientific research and their scientific research is being put in open access as well. So this is the, the front web page of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the repository of Mozambique that is called Sabir and severe means knowledge. Uh, here we have uh, a picture of the open access in other African, Asian, Portuguese speaking countries. So we have in Angola, Guinea-Bissau, São Tomé and Príncipe, and Timor-Leste. So, and in all, we are trying to boost the, the scientific production and along with the scientific production, we are trying to foster the open access of their scientific production as well. Okay, Brazil. Brazil is uh, a very good case where open access is uh, very widespread. They have several open repositories. Uh, so here I, I have these uh, numbers. It's the number of masters and PhDs uh, and we can see um, the Brazilian scientific context. You can see the production, the scientific production in, in Brazil that is huge. Uh, I chose these four initiatives of open access in, in Brazil. They have Cielo, Scientific Electronic Library Online, Oasis.br, Search Portal for Brazilian Scientific Publications, BDTV, the Brazilian Digital Library for Theses and Dissertations, and SEER, that is System for the Creation and Management of Brazilian Scientific Journals. Uh, they participate in open access scientific information networks, such as La Referencia, Coar Latino, and the Portuguese Brazilian Directory, RECAP. The evolution of Brazilian scientific journals in, in the last 10 years, it's huge as well. So 2002, zero, 2012, 768. Uh, here it's the number of documents deposited in, in Brazilian institutional repositories so supported by EBIT. Okay, it's only to show you that is huge, but you cannot see it, so let's change it. Uh, so, uh, within the European Union framework, I'm now coming back to Europe, because now I'm going to present the case of Portugal. So, the European Union framework, we have the Council of the European Union that adopted Council conclusions on scientific information in, in digital age. Well, some of you they don't know what Council conclusions are, but, well, it's only for you to know that ministers adopted something in 2007 on scientific information in the digital age. Then the European Research Council in uh, December 2007, they adopted their own scientific council guidelines for open access that are different from the commissions. And in the seventh framework program for research and development, uh, we have three main uh, uh, projects that are supported financially by the framework program. It's driver two, the digital repository infrastructure vision for European research, open air, open access infrastructure for research in Europe, uh, that will be now, um, it will have an open air plus until 2014. Uh, it's the second generation of open access infrastructure for research in Europe. But you can imagine the, the lobby of the publishers against this movement. 
Uh, so, as I said previously, we have two major uh, EC proposals that were released in, in July, the communication and the, the recommendation on access and preservation of scientific information. Uh, so, before this communication was uh, written, there, wa there was an open consultation, and in this open consultation, uh, you can see uh, the big blue, dark blue, uh, is the, the researchers that agreed st strongly uh, with open access. Uh, the light blue, they agree, so 76% agreed strongly, 14% agreed, 7% uh, disagreed, 2% uh, disagreed strongly, and 1% no opinion in Europe. Okay, Portugal. Pioneering initiatives, they started in 2003, so it follows the trend that I was talking about since the beginning of uh, 2000. So uh, we uh, started with a, um, a repository uh, in the University of Minho, the very north of Portugal. Uh, then in 2005, we had the first uh, open access policy, 2011, the second open access policy. And let me just underline the very uh, end, the recap, that is the, uh, the scientific uh, repository uh, of uh, open access in Portugal uh, that was uh, done in 2008. Uh, well, here, what can you see? Nothing, but you can see lots of things. So it's open access in Portugal. So in 2003, you can only see uh, the opening of the repositorium in the university in Minho. And if you go to the very end of this line, 2012, you can see several repositories. So open access uh, in Portugal, uh, it, it evolved a lot since 2004 until 2011. And uh, uh, 10 million documents were downloaded from RECAP uh, in, 2000, uh, in 2011, 2000, in 2011, 2012. So 10 million documents. Uh, the documents that are in open access, there are articles, conference proceedings, master di dissertations, doctoral theses, books and book chapters, working papers, and others. So 40% there are articles. Uh, cooperation in open access. In November 2010, RECAP has been, RECAP, so the Portuguese uh, 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 repository, has been integrated with the largest Brazilian open access repository, oasis.br. So as a result of this integration, both repositories' content are jointly searchable, making it possible nowadays to look for within close to half million documents from RECAP and lots of them in Portuguese. Uh, Portugal has a significant and fast-growing involvement on the availability of scientific publica uh, publications in open access and is ready to set up mandates for the open access availability of publicly funded research results. I'm just coming to say one thing, that Foundation for Science and Technology, that is our National Research Council, it's the funding agency, uh, is going to launch its own policy for open access. So uh, all the researchers, uh, all the researchers community is waiting for the release of uh, this policy that is uh, done, but it, it was not yet adopted by, by the minister. Um, some of the concrete measures currently being considered so that Portugal complies with the DC re re recommendation may include, may include mandatory deposit of the publications in one of the RECAP's institutional repositories, eligibility of golden open access publishing costs, 
and inclusion of the open access availability of doctoral theses supported by public funding. I'm not going to discuss here the golden uh, model and the green model, but there are uh, these models uh, for open access. Open data, it's very difficult. So in several areas, uh, such as uh, medicine, for instance, they are very against to, to open data because of ethic reasons and uh, others. So we are having uh, um, several conferences about open data uh, in, the, in the several scientific areas. So it's not going to be mandatory, but we are going to suggest to the researchers uh, to, op to, to put in open access their, the data they used for their uh, results of, of their research. Um, so, institutional repositories, digital libraries for students and dissertations, as well as open access electronic journals, have been steadily growing. Portuguese speaking countries made significant investments on the number of open access scientific journals and available documents. And uh, OASIS.pr and VOCAP now provide almost half a million documents for download. Well, this is repeated because I already said that. Uh, so, finally, Portuguese speaking countries' tendencies and perspectives. And why such tendencies and perspectives are on the table? Because open access become a tool to closer linkages between research and innovation with evidence-based benefits for public policy services and thus for social and economic growth. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Nevis. Uh, you told me very, very interesting case, and uh, I have impression you have made a big pro progress. Yes, since last year. Yeah, okay. since last year. I think uh, uh, we, we have learned a lot from you. I think we have to back to China to make more efforts to promote open access and uh, open data available, particularly in science scientific areas. Thank you again, Nevis. Okay. Uh, next speaker is uh, Professor, uh, Professor Zhu Xiang. Yeah. Uh, because uh, we have, uh, uh, I think uh, we have only uh, 20 minutes uh, left, so I I suppose the uh, next speaker may be shorter, their presentation. And uh, I want to open the uh, floor to discussion and comments. It's very uh, useful for, uh, for you, I, I think. Yeah, please. OK, thanks, Chair. Uh, I'm going to make it quick as I can. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So today I'm going to talk about uh, Knowledge and the case of Earth observation application for disaster mitigation and management. As you may know, natural disaster caused lo great loss to our lives and the property. So, uh, the living condition and the environment we have are facing severe challenges, especially in developing countries, uh, including China. So. What we want to hear, we try to collect uh, the successful application of observation data and uh, find the best solution for the potential user, include decision maker and the users, and provide them the uh, best uh, suggestion advice for the uh, coming disaster. Uh, if this case can be reused, uh, the, the, the loss and damage caused by the coming disaster would be relieved. So that is the basic idea of uh, this work. So uh, we have collected many successful application keys. Then we want to build a keys system, which is a keys based system. If a user want to explore the reuser, reusable possibility, uh, with the support of the, uh, this key system, he can 
uh, log on this system, so we design it uh, with the support of the internet. This is a web-based system as well. So to illustrate the idea of this work, I want to show you some applications of uh, vision data for disaster management first. Uh, actually, this is a joint work with uh, IAA. As you may know, it's the uh, International Academy of Astronautica. So we have a study group which approved by the border of IAA in 2010. Uh, this study group focused on the research of the uh, cooperation program for global environmental impacts. There are two kinds of uh, research field. Uh, one aspect is uh, evaluate the potential role of space science and technology uh, and application for uh, decreasing loss in environmental disaster. And the second uh, aspect is to enhance the application of space science and technology in global environmental impact study. So uh, we have uh, 28 members from eight countries, also more than 20 research institutions uh, from international uh, aspects joined this research. So, uh, as we know, the space science and technology can play an important role for disaster mitigation and management. So they, they have already many successful applications and cases, uh, like uh, earthquake uh, using uh, different satellite data, and the Typhoon is an uh, application of meteorology satellite. We also have many successful applications in the field of flooding monitoring, CS, snowing, frog monitoring, also drought application, and fire monitoring and oil spill detection. So this is uh, already many successful uh, applications from different countries in different uh, ranges over the world. So uh, we have collected uh, uh, many uh, successful applications then categorized in different uh, 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 types for the potential user. So for earthquake, uh, because the space science technology can play uh, important roles, not only monitoring the disaster, it can play much important uh, uh, roles uh, during the different phase of disaster, like uh, prediction and uh, monitoring, also some, uh, some work which can be provided used, uh, useful suggestion for the reconstruction. So the, this covers the different phase, like pre-disaster, during disaster, and after disaster. So it's very useful. So for earthquake forecasting, we have developed um, many new models to predict the happening of earthquake, like uh, temperature detection and uh, clothing anomaly, also the gas uh, emission detection. So there are some new hypotheses we collect also with the uh, application data. We want to put it in the key system. There are also some emergency response to the earthquake. Uh, there are also some uh, application case. This, this case shows the uh, wind earthquake in 2008 in China. Also, uh, this is another case we have done uh, for the Haiti earthquake in 2010. So this, for each kind of disaster, we have collected many successful cases. This one is landslide and flooding monitoring in Pakistan. And uh, for flooding monitoring in Venezuela and the typhoon monitoring in China. Mud rock flood flow monitoring also in west part of China. And snow monitoring and CS monitoring. This is one, the left one is the fog monitoring uh, in the China with the uh, Chinese meteorology satellite. So we also can do some monitoring of unfair uh, with the support of uh, satellite data. This one is uh, another Chinese satellite called HG. It's a 
environmental and uh, disaster mitigation small satellite constellation. This is uh, the result uh, derived from satellite, which was uh, successfully applied in Australia. And also we can do some drought monitoring with the support of uh, satellite data in Africa, also in Asia country. This is uh, oil spill monitoring with uh, SAR, it's uh, radar, size, radar uh, technology, and uh, this is for Mexico Bay oil spill uh, incident. And also some new application about uh, remote sensing. We monitoring the spreading and distribution of uh, infectious disease. So that's the uh, keys and a successful, successfully application we collect. What we want to do just we want to, to build a key system with uh, uh, these uh, successful applications. Uh, we borrowed the idea and the concept of the CBS, CBR system. That's, uh, with this system, you do not to know too much general knowledge about the Process, data processing or remote sensing or for the basic knowledge of the different detect means. So we can, we can get most knowledge from the case. And this case is existing ones and uh, have been proved successfully in different fields. So in a normal procedure, we just, uh, pro, uh, we just uh, ask the uh, pro, pro we just uh, uh, we just uh, uh, see the problem, and the keys will be derived from the system and compare the similarity with the existing ones. Then we want to reuse and make a slightly and appropriate adoption based on existing case. Then we will form a new solution for our problem. Then. This uh, is a uh, is a uh, uh, re refined and improved solution will be to, uh, will be provided to the user and the decision maker. So this is a system structure, uh, an architecture for this case based system. So we have uh, built a proper type system uh, based on the the principle of this design. Uh, we want to extend the different uh, field of disaster and uh, try to uh, try to include more and more successful application. So for the future action, uh, the first uh, question is uh, we want to uh, include more successful case and also data which could be shared between the different uh, uh, department, also different country in different ranges. So this case system must be to extend and enhance. We need more case studies and open to, which is open to the professional and the public. So uh, the second uh, question is uh, validation knowledge and case information. As you may know, uh, there are some uh, predict uh, result and the methodology for disaster monitoring and the prediction on the web site. So this is, uh, uh, on the one hand, is the advantage of the internet, but, but also you, it's hard to uh, uh, discern the accuracy and uh, reliability of this message. So you, you must to have a professional knowledge and successfully prove for this kind of uh, application case. So what we need to do is just to analyze the risk of this uh, information on the website and also try to prove and refine this methodology for predictive analysis for disaster management. So uh, this figure shows the uh, data sharing of Chinese satellite. It's called the Cybers. It's a, a cooperative uh, project uh, between the China and the Brazil. So this uh, satellite has uh, uh, built a new receiving station in South Africa, also in Kapan, uh, in Africa. So uh, the Chinese government also have signed the 
data sharing agreement with uh, some European country like Italy, Spain, and France. So we want to extend the data information service and the data sharing through this kind of international cooperation. Uh, this is the final goal of uh, our disaster management spatial information system, system and service. So uh, in this, under this framework, the data from different sources can be uh, useful input for the information system uh, with the support of internet and also other technology like uh, cloud computing, high performance computing. So as you may see, this, this case system I just uh, proposed would be very uh, important part for the whole system uh, with uh, the successful construction of this uh, system we will provide the technology for the uh, disaster mitigation that's, uh, that's uh, including data processing uh, uh, data uh, uh, pr uh, pr information products also some technology service and uh, also another important point is data sharing we we well, we have collected many data uh, for this kind of uh, application so this data can be used for the researcher or the public for their uh, deep analysis for the uh, disaster uh, for for the um, research of uh, disaster mechanism and the monitoring uh, of the disaster evolution uh, even for the uh, uh, for the guidance of the uh, reconstruction of the of the after disaster so uh, this is uh, the structure and the joint platform we have uh, done uh, within this work with the support of uh, several international organizations so first one is UNGID is the uh, United Nations for space based information disaster management and emergency response also UNGID ESDDC uh, we also have a close uh, uh, very close uh, cooperation with uh, SAT and the IAA, International Academy of Astronautics, and uh, also Asia uh, uh, Scientific Council of Asia. So uh, we hope we can improve this fr uh, framework and make more concrete and add some uh, more and more uh, successful application in this system. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor Zhou Qiang. We have learned a lot of, uh, from you about the uh, uh, importance of the open knowledge environment for disaster management. Now, I suppose uh, we, we still have uh, two speakers more, so, but the time not enough. So maybe I suggest uh, uh, Professor uh, Shi Hong. Maybe can can you finish your presentation in three minutes or five minutes, <laughs> please? Oh yeah. I tried. Thank you very much. I, I try to be very brief. I don't have any slides. I try to save uh, time for everyone. Uh, we all have other meetings to go. Um, I, I try to use very brief uh, presentation to explain very complicated issue <laughs> is about copyright. Um, and uh, we, we learn from these uh, wonderful speakers, especially from Anna, about how open access can stimulate poverty reduction uh, and, um, and disaster mitigation. These are very good things. Open access to knowledge and information has become a global campaign. Actually, early this year, there's a global professor's campaign uh, against the scientific scientific publication system. That's because the journals are so expensive. They're too expensive even for the professor who are writing articles to be published on this journal uh, to, to be uh, affordable to these professors. So this has become a really unbearable situation now. Of course, open access knowledge information is very much valuable topic to Chinese people. Uh, this 1.3 billion in a big country. Uh, I guess uh, uh, the people in China will be more openly accessible to knowledge, will be 
be a great contribution to the whole world. However, when we are sharing the information, the information wants to be free. When we're doing this, there's something standing in the middle. They're called copyright.、Uh, <laughs> uh, when you're sharing、uh, wonderfully, happily, the information or knowledge products, remember that there's, there's somebody else's property.、Uh, there's somebody else's copyrights. There's somebody else's original intellectual creations. They're actually protected in different countries' law. In China, they're protected by Chinese copyright law. But of course, if you will, copyright law is a bad thing. It's something、uh, like a devil. It's not fair. <laughs> actually, the copy. Copyright system has many has many internal mechanism、uh, to magnitude the negative impacts. On one hand, it is protecting the people's intellectual creation to stimulate more creations intellectually. On the other hand, it is many legal rooms we call flexibility to enable peoples to access to knowledge.、Uh, well, legally we call these limitation or exceptions. If we put in the lens of this、uh, copyright law, we can see this open access movement is actually subject to these legal barriers. I was specifically requires to talk about this uh, uh, open teaching or open course. Uh, and copyright. Oh, if we use、uh, Chinese copyright to analyze that, there's a lot of legal barriers. It's pretty clear.、Uh, one of the biggest problem to do this is that under the Chinese current copyright law, only classroom teaching, uh, 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 only limited reproduction or translation of copyright. Work can be used for classroom teaching. This is very clear under Chinese、uh, copyright law, Article Twenty Three,、uh, Subsection Six. So this is what is allowed in the law. This is a, a kind of defense against any copyright claim from copyright authors. I do understand this great initiative from the Ministry of Education.、Uh, probably the Ministry of Education can take away all the teachers' creation.、Uh, this our slices used for teaching.、Uh, this all belongs to this. Projects that's okay, but think about the third parties copyright involved, especially these videos. They could be movies. They're from movie industry. Are they happy to be taken away, used for education? This is not specifically allowed in the copyright law. So when we have this open access projects initiative, probably we need to think about the legal framework we're living in, and that is actually a soft infrastructure we have to take in, into account. And uh, uh, finally, I I do hope we have a more open world, more open, available information、um, and knowledge to everyone. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much,、uh, Professor Xu. It's very clear, very focused. <laughs> The last speaker is、uh, William Jack. Doctor Jack, I I I suppose you can summarize our discussion <laughs> instead of me, <laughs> please.、Um, thank you very much. I'm not sure that I really could summarize this panel in a way that would entirely do it justice. So I think I'll just speak. I was supposed to speak the、uh, 25 minutes ago,、um, and now the time is up. So. I will speak 25 times faster, or 25 times less <laughs> than I normally would, which is quite okay by me, I suppose.、Um, this is the seventh time I've spoken、uh, at a workshop organized by my colleagues from CAST, and it's always been very interesting、uh, in each IGF to hear what they've been doing and how the work is progressing. I think that it's、uh, really remarkably.、Um, Promising and interesting,、uh, particularly some of the areas、uh, that we discussed today, such as disaster management. I remember when I was in China as a guest of CAST in 2008. I was taken to Sichuan after the after the earthquake, and we had quite interesting conversations about ways in which the internet and other ICTs could be used to help in disaster、uh, recovery and so on. So I think it's very important the work that you're doing, and I. Strongly supported, and I hope it continues to go forward. I myself, I guess, I tend to think of an open knowledge environment in a little bit broader way, personally,、um, not just scientific and technological、uh, knowledge, but rather all forms of knowledge, ideas, information, and opinions, and not just with regard to the digital networked environment, but also more broadly the socio-institutional. Uh, environment as well、uh, as a social system, and in that sense,、um, I was asked today to speak about OKE and IGF. 
And at first I thought, well, what can I say? Uh, aside from we have very interesting workshops about OKE at the IGF. But then it occurred to me, the IGF is an OKE. Yeah. And so yeah. that's what I should come and talk yeah. about. Yeah. Uh, the IGF is precisely the type of environment that one would, I think, want to encourage um, replication of. Uh, and indeed, the IGF model is being repeated around the world. We've seen IGFs proliferate at the national and regional level. And I hope someday we can have one in, in China yeah. as well. I'd be happy to come visit. I agree, I agree. Um, but, uh, you know, and if you look at what makes the IGF an open knowledge environment, well, it's, yes, it's the tools. The tools are used in a very innovative way. I mean, there are not many other international institutional environments I've been involved in where you have live uh, transcribing uh, of everything. You have uh, uh, video ca cast, webcast, of course. You have remote participation. Probably the best, well, ICANN has excellent remote participation also. But ICANN and IGF in particular, IETF too, but especially those two bodies, um, fantastic remote participation possibilities. And I know that there are people gathered around the world in remote participation hubs as we speak, listening in on this and other workshops, and normally able to send in, make comments online and have them read out, which is why we have a remote participation uh, coordinator over there uh, who probably has some questions. Um, but uh, so that kind of use of the tools, I think, is a really innovative uh, thing about the IGF. It makes the IGF not a closed box, not a hermetically sealed envelope, such as the big expensive uh, academic journals that are, lo yes, locked down by copyright. But of course, there are other things that stand in the way of an open environment besides copyright as well. Um, but at the same time, uh, there are other aspects of the IGF that make it open as well. The bottom-up character of it, the lack of a, you know, the, the lack of a big top-down bureaucratic mechanism to tell everybody what to do, what to focus on, what to talk about. The fact that anybody can propose a workshop and have it evaluated by peers and put it on. The fact that uh, everybody can participate through open consultations in designing the themes and the main sessions of the IGF. The fact that everybody can participate through open consultations and online dialogues in providing input on the governance and identity and purpose of the IGF. All of these things make the IGF a, an open knowledge environment and a very vibrant and rich one. And certainly one where I would think we could carry forward the discussion of the kinds of interesting initiatives that the colleagues from China have described, as well as Anna in the Portuguese-speaking countries. So I think it's really great to, to discuss uh, OKE issues in this environment. And uh, we are out of time, so I will, I will stop. I think, though, that the person who's doing remote uh, participation was waving at me. So probably the, there's a remote question. So I will stop, and you can take that question. I will have okay. to leave, though. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Jack. I, I think, uh, yeah. I think uh, all the audience, including me, agree with uh, 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 Drak, Dr. Drak. The IGF uh, itself is an open knowledge environment. So maybe uh, we, we can uh, maybe a, a few minutes for questions and uh, comments very briefly, very briefly, because time is not enough. Maybe, uh, maybe I, I, I open the floor for, 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 for some questions. You can raise the, your hands. Yeah, you you, you have. Huh? Oh, this is question. Oh. Okay, okay. Remote, remote. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you uh, mm. for this nice information that you shared. Uh, my name is Elchim Madov, uh, Institute of Information Technologies. So my question is, uh, you talked about open knowledge, so uh, open access. So how you measure the like quality and validation of information? And how the government support, for example, in Portugal practice? How long the government like support you in the project, in the technical side? Or you have some other foundation that helps in like, the money part, in the foundation part? And how you solve the copyright uh, things? Authors. Thank you. 
maybe uh, Navy, Navy, you you can you can answer briefly. Uh, thank you very much. Well, uh, um, I knew that the copyrights in, and intellectual property uh, it would be a, a, an issue, but this is totally re regulated and it, it it has nothing to do with open access of scientific publication because all that regulation is assured. So nothing change. Another thing is that uh, what we are doing now uh, as a policy, as a, as a public policy, is only for scientific uh, uh, publication that is evaluated by peers. So only these uh, publications, only these scientific research uh, results that can be published, published uh, and that had a, a good evaluation, uh, they can uh, be supported under this policy for open access. Uh, of course, if you don't uh, be, uh, if you, if you are not evaluated, you can put your your document in a, rep uh, a repository. You are free. But who, the person that is going to see that research result, that person will know that it was not evaluated. So they know. Um, and that's it, I think. Hey, microphone, microphone. In open access, okay, uh, you have some peer-reviewed journals or some scientific world uh, works, actually. So uh, it can open it's on open access and uh, scientific people can use in the session and cite these resources, this information. So is it possible, like, like using open, uh, open access information, make their dissertations, their scientific works? I hope I can. I'm not listening, I'm not listening we very well. You, you. Uh, the rest of us yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Maybe maybe some question from a remote participants. It's over there. Oh, over there. Yes, yes. Uh, Mr. Uh, Professor Tao. Yes. Yeah, it's for your questions. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, do you have any suggestion for some other developing country since the government may not have enough money to finance the project? Mm. But I think uh, the money uh, never enough. Uh, fortunately, there are so many uh, funding agency. Uh, good idea is most important, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Any question? And have seen uh, oh, another one, yeah? Remote uh, Yeah, uh, this one also for me. Uh, a certificate award awarded as a result of online course, where it be equivalent to a traditional, uh, traditional university certificate in terms of the quality of education. According to my understanding, uh, the uh, open course is also given by some famous professors from famous university. I think uh, if a student can pass this kind of the same examination, I think the certificate also is also very good. Thank you. And also you talk to Oh, uh, it seems a lot of the work is uh, centralized by the Ministry of Education in China. What is the advantage and the disadvantage? I think so maybe uh, it's very hard to say advantage and uh, disadvantage. For my understanding, for my understanding, uh, if the uh, fund agency can uh, cooperate or alone, uh, cooperate with the uh, uh, Ministry of Education, uh, we can do it uh, to open courses very well. Actually, for our uh, BOPT University, we also uh, accept some uh, funding agencies' uh, donation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, are there some uh, more questions? Uh, no? I've seen none. Now, may announce this uh, our workshop uh, closed. I would like to thank our speakers for their contribution and the good presentation and also
I want to thank all the audience present here. Thank you very much. And see you again next time.
Bu çıkar mı bu ay? Bu çıkar mı?